Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Ten-year-old boy who was shot in Arnett Gardens has died. Ten-year-old boy who was shot by a gunman in Arnett Gardens, St. Andrew, on Thursday has succumbed to his injuries. Reports are that the child, Jahim Bogle, was riding his bicycle close to the Tony Sparling Sports Complex when he was shot. He was rushed to the Kingston Public Hospital and transferred to the Bustamante Hospital for Children later on Thursday. Reports are that he succumbed to his injuries early on Friday. The incident has triggered shock and anger in the area where public agitation is now heightened about the ongoing deadly violence, which has resulted in a number of fatalities recently. Popular fruit vendor killed on Omara Road A popular fruit vendor was shot and killed along Omara Road of Hogley Park Road in St. Andrew on Friday morning. He has been identified as Steve Garden. Reports are that sometime after 6 a.m., Garden was at his stall peeling an orange when gunmen approached and shot him multiple times. The gunmen then escaped. St. Andrew Central Police are investigating the incident. Woman held after going missing from guest house with lover's gun. A 21-year-old woman has been arrested and charged with illegal possession of firearm and ammunition and simple larceny following an incident at a guest house in Sandy Bay, Clarendon on Monday, July 12. The woman has been identified as Tanisha Brissett, a hotel worker of Lilliput, Montego Bay in St. James. Reports from the Maypen Police or that on Sunday, July 11, at about 11.30 p.m., a man picked up Brissett along the roadway and assisted her to a guest house in the parish where they both spent the night. Reports are that before retiring to bed, the man placed his firearm and ammunition in a table drawer for safekeeping. When he reached home, he remembered that he left his firearm in the guest house room and went to retrieve it, but both the firearm and Brissett were missing. A report was made to the police and a snap raid was carried out in the Bushy Park area of Mapen Clarendon, where Brissett was located and the firearm was found in a brown canvas bag. Brissett was subsequently charged by the police. Her court date is being finalized. 21-year-old charged with shooting murder 21-year-old Kerry Charlton has been arrested and charged with murder following the shooting death of 25-year-old Montel Shaw in Manchester on Wednesday, January 27. The police said that Shaw was walking along the roadway about 8.40 a.m. Two men traveling on a motorcycle approached him. He reported the run down a slope and was chased and shot multiple times. The men fled and Shaw was assisted to the hospital. The police said that while being treated, Shaw gave a dying declaration in which he implicated Charlton as one of the men who shot at him. Lawmen said that he was shown a photo album and he identified Charlton. The police said Charlton was arrested on Wednesday, June 30, during an operation. He was charged following an interview. Five people charged in murder of 65-year-old Trelawney man. Detectives assigned to the Trelawney Criminal Investigation Branch have arrested and charged five people in relation to the July 12 murder of 65-year-old Glenford Henry. The police said that charged with murder are 35-year-old Ferran Smart, of Spanish Town St. Catherine, 35-year-old Anthony Gibbs, otherwise called Short Bars and Webster, of Bounty Hall Trelawney, 27-year-old Christopher Morrison, a farmer, and 31-year-old Alakai Morris, otherwise called Nikki, and 60-year-old Victor Morrison, of Kitchen Crescent, Wakefield in the parish. The police said that Alakai Morris was also charged with illegal possession of firearm and illegal possession of ammunition. Lawmen said that citizens heard explosion about 8.05 a.m. and summoned them. When the police arrived, Henry was seen with gunshot wounds to the upper body. He was transported to hospital where he was pronounced dead. Christopher Morris, Gibbs and Smart surrendered to the police, the lawmen reported. Further investigations led to the arrest of Victor Morris while Alakai Morris was arrested during an operation conducted in Wakefield, Trelawney. Clock pistol with 3.45 cartridges was recovered in the operation. 30 million loss in Crossroads Warehouse Fire Fire on Thursday damaged a warehouse in Crossroads St. Andrew, leaving an estimated $30 million in loss. According to the Jamaica Fire Brigade, 
it is still conducting an investigation to ascertain the cause of the blaze. Public Relations Officer for the Jamaica Fire Brigade, Emila Ibanks, confirmed that no one was injured in the incident. He also urged businesses to get their certification from the fire department. All businesses need to be inspected and certified by the Jamaica Fire Brigade. So, if your business place is not certified by the fire brigade, then clearly you're at risk. So, you need to have your place certified, Ibang said, as he explained that the fire department conduct inspections on a yearly basis. Scared Granville Councillor Calls for Zozo After Double Murder Councillor for the Granville Division in St. James, Michael Thorpe, who represents the People's National Party, is calling for a zone of special operations, Zozo, to be declared in the community following Wednesday night's brutal gun slaying of a couple, the latest in the space of bloodletting in the troubled era. The police identified the deceased as 28-year-old Ashawn Holness and 28-year-old Jody Ann Roberts as security officer. Police reported that about 11.45 on Wednesday night, the two were sitting on their veranda when they came under heavy gunfire from three heavily armed men, they died on the spot. It is serious, so whether a zozo or state of emergency, whatever tool the government has, we need it in Granville now, Thor pleaded. If zozo is the answer, bring it on. If state of emergency is the answer, bring it on. Right now, the residents of Granville are calling for anything that can subside the crime in Granville. I am the counsel for the past 23 years here, and I am getting scared myself, really getting scared, said Thorpe. Still terrified, one woman who was at the home when the gunman struck said, All me here are just shot, just shot, me just traumatized right now, I don't know why, only God alone can tell me why, she said, her voice cracking as tears streamed down her cheeks. A distraught brother of wholeness argued that he does not have a clue why anyone would want to harm his brother. It is unfortunate that him and the girl upon the veranda me can't tell you what happened. I was at work when me got the call saying my brother and a girl dead upon the veranda. Me come up here and see the two bodies lying on the veranda, he said. He was all right, but it's just that he loved company. Apart from that, to me, he was all right. Never hear him name call up say him shoot nobody or kill nobody. But to me, he was all right. Nobody never come to me and say he was involved in anything, so I don't know. It is what it is. We have to move on. Thorpe, meanwhile, claimed that the spike in murders in the community started three months ago when a man was murdered. Since then, eight others have died. There is a gang split because of some infight, and that's what is happening now. It has now split into five different gangs in Granville, he said. A senior police officer close to the investigations confirmed that the killings were as a result of an ongoing feud among splintered factor of the Big Yard Gang. Over the last two weeks, people are moving out like doves, Councillor Thorpe said. Right now, Granville is on fire. I don't know no better way to say it. Over the last two months, Granville erupted and the violence that is happening now is very disappointing to me. Clarendon curfew was needed, says Senior Cop. A recent flare-up of violence in this community has its roots as far as 2017, says a senior police officer who is convinced the imposition of a curfew was necessary. We have had a number of murders and shooting, and that has caused tension between the One Mile and Gully Buck fraction of the Real Niggas gang. The tension has been extremely high since the last incident, where Marvin Rasta Simit was shot and killed by two men in the community. Simit was affiliated with the one male fraction, and so we anticipate that at any time we will have confrontations between the disputing parties, explained Superintendent in charge of operations in Clarendon, Christopher Phillips. He added that residents have welcomed the 48 hour curfew, which began at 6 p.m. on Wednesday. I am amazed at the reaction. They were extremely happy to see us moving in. Cooperation since then has been extremely tremendous. As soon as we announce that there is a curfew, persons readily expressed their support for it and were off the street in a jiffy, he said, 
adding that there will be a continuous assessment of the communities across the parish. In addition to the restrictions imposed under the curfew, other measures will include work being done by the community safety and security branch team, he said. It has recently been a bit of challenging period, but we are committed to ensuring that the residents feel safe. Some persons who are closely affiliated with some members of the gang have moved out of the community. Others are tight-lipped about what is happening and so we, the police, will try to maintain a presence in this space to see how much information we can get from the people in the community, said Phillips. Please remember to subscribe, like, share and click the notification bell for daily updates.